Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to work on the Corona Knot Bracelet. And this bracelet sort of plays off the Corona Bracelet and Corona Ring that I have videos up for and I'll pop up links for those videos um, and put them in the description box below the video. So here it is. It's a knot bracelet and I love these knots. I've been wanting to work with knots for a long time and uh, I just thought this lended itself so well to making a knot bracelet. I love the 80 seed beads and their four millimeter bicones. These are that pretty light Siam satin Swarovski bicones. Beautiful. Just has a simple box clasp like the other one. Now I've switched it or changed it a little bit for this video just because this is the prototype so I you know I kind of change stuff around. Not much. I'm just taking off this um, part here. I'm going to bring the bicones all the way down because why not? Okay, so anyway, here it is. So um, let's get into a materials list right now. All right, so put this aside and let me pull out a little bit. So for this, you're going to need 80 seed beads, and I'm using the uh, 457 Miyuki's, which I use a lot of. This is the metallic bronze, and then you're going to need some four millimeter bicones. Now, I got a request to make a an emerald green one, and the uh, um, metallic bronze uh, from a friend so I'm going to make this along with um, with the video but the actual video I'm going to make in matte beads and lighter bicones just so it's easier for you to see me do it. You need a box clasp. This is a two strand box clasp. I think it's 16 by 9. Um, you'll need some wildfire beading thread and you'll need a size 10 beading needle. Now often people ask me why I used wildfire instead of fireline and I figured just let me answer it here instead of you know um, just answering each one um, separately. Wildfire doesn't come off in my hands and it's also a little bit of a thicker thread and I like that. It's, um, it's supple yet it's got a little bit more body to it and for me it doesn't break. Um, as long as you can get it through the hole in your needle. It is a little thicker, so getting it through a size 10 is fine. I even get it through a size 11, but a size 12, I'm not sure. It might be a little tight depending on the, the eye of the needle. But I happen to, I'm, I'm just in love with the Wildfire these days. I have used, I do have a lot of the uh, Fireline and the Fireline Black Satin. I'm finding the Black Satin is, um, it's a little thin. I don't know, and it's been breaking. So I don't know if it's just that they have to perfect it or what, but I'm really loving the wildfire. It's working very well for me these days. And also, I wanted to mention another thing, my bead mats. I'm getting a lot of re requests for the beautiful bead mats that I use. Now, I use these big, um, I think they're 14 by 22 inch bead mats, and I love this color. This is sage, and I get them from a, an Etsy store named Ringberries, and run by a lovely woman. I'm Hillary, and she um, gives me a 10% discount, and she's given me a code to give you a 10% discount if you would like to buy these mats. So look in the description box under the video. There's a coupon code in there. I think it's Bronze Pony 10, all caps. And go to her um, Etsy store and you know take a look at her bead mats because she they're just they're great colors and they're they're big. I mean she has smaller ones too, but. I really love them. So anyway, um, that's what you're going to need for this video. So gather up your materials and we'll get started making the pretty Corona Knot bracelet. See you in a few. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to give you some measurements. So to make this bracelet, we're going to measure, we're just going to measure the beaded part. Now this clasp, when it's clasped, is about it's about half an inch, but then we have this little bit here. So you're talking about an, about an inch here. So take that into consideration. Half inch on each side, let's say, for the clasp. So we want to measure our beaded section. So just so you know, about 13 seed beads is an inch. All right? 80 seed beads. So we want to measure these pieces. There are two pieces here, so this is why I've pulled these out. So here are the two pieces. And the way it's going to be constructed is this piece and this piece are going to be knotted in the center. So that, when I, we knot this in the center, so let's say these are about the same size right now as the bracelet. When we knot these, it's going to shorten the bracelet. So what you need to do here is you need to add a little bit 
to each piece. So we're going to make two pieces. You have to add a little bit. So add about an inch, inch and a quarter to each piece that you make and that will accommodate the knot. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back. So I've threaded, thread your needle with about six or seven feet of wildfire fire line. Put on a stop bead and leave a very long tail, 24 inches, maybe even 30 inches. I want you to be able to use the, the tail thread to sew these bicones on. So what's going to happen is we're going to be folding our, our uh, square stitch pieces over and connecting them sort of in the center. So I want you to have a tail at the end to sew the bicones in. If you don't, it's not a problem. We can always, you know, can always add that on separately. That is not a problem. All right, so let me move this out of the way. So here's my stop bead. Here are my beads. I'm just going to lay them over my finger. It's just a comfortable way for me to sew. I'm going to move my beads over. So here are all your loose beads. Your, as I said, your stop beads there. Threads coming out of here. Pick up two of your eightos coming out of here, come down the last two, just like that. Pull through. That's going to sit those two beads right next to the, the two new beads next to the beads that are already on there. Come back up through those two. up one. Here are all your loose beads. Grab a loose bead, come down the loose bead, come through the loose bead, and the tube and up below it, just like that. And then back up the three, just like that. So you have Pick up one bead, go through a loose bead and the two below it, so you're down three, picking one up, going down, it's going to be three, and then going to go across and up the, 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 bead, that, the, neck, the bead that is next to the one you're coming out of, and two more, so it's up three, and as it gets bigger, you'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm doing. Here we go. Pick up one, grab a loose bead, come down two more, just like that. Up three. So for those of you who have done the Corona bracelet, I changed the the uh, sequence a little bit as far as what I'm sewing because it just seemed. Um, so here, pick up one, come down two, so that's three. It just seemed that um, it was, you didn't have to reinforce, you know, at the very end if I did it this way. So let me just fix my boo-boo there. So here, I picked up one, come down three, and up three. So if, you know, for those of you who haven't done, done it yet, we originally we did this whole line and then we reinforced by going through all the beads and back up again. With the, doing it this way, you don't have to do that. It's reinforcing it sort of as you go along. So pick up one, come down three, up three, pick up one, grab a bead from your... Loose beads, come down two more, so that's down three. Up three. Just like that. Pick up one. Pick up a loose bead and two more. Or come through a loose bead and two more. Then up three. And do one more. Grab a loose bead, come through that bead and the two beneath it, so that's down three. Your thread just about tells you where to go up, up, three. 
Okay, so do that. Just keep doing that <laughs> until you get to the, you know, a few beads before the end, and then we'll sew the end beads on together. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back, and I'm down to my last few beads, so I thought we'd do these together. So, just grabbing a bead, coming down two under, so it's down three. Up three. Down three. Up three. Down. Three and up. Three. Okay, so now I'm done with my first piece. All right, and at this point, you can take this thread and just come down a few beads and maybe up a couple and just down maybe a couple more. Lots of room in these beads, these eightos. And just tie off your thread or if you sew around a bit like that, then really all you need to do is cut it off and then go um, and make another one, <laughs> just like this one. <laughs> all right, so go ahead and do that and meet me back here and we'll continue. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back and I've done my two pieces. And just for um, video's sake, I've cut my ends off just so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. I've left one to put the icons on, but what you'll do is you'll have one piece with a, the long thread coming out of one end and one piece with the long thread coming out of the other end and you might even have a second one uh, thread uh, end thread coming out which you'll want you to leave too because you can put the clasp on with that or you can do the clasp, se clasp separately. Alright, so what we're going to do is before we sew any bicons on, we're going to make a knot. So you're going to take your piece like this, both your pieces, I'm just going to leave the needle on that one. Here, I'll do it this way, so there you go. All right. So just go like this. All right. And then put one over the other, just like that. I'll just leave it for a second. And then you're going to take one end, like this, come through the circle that you made, like that, and over the top. Just like that. And don't worry about if it's short or anything. We're going to pull it all. Take the other end. Come through the circle. Just like you did the other side. Like that. And over the top. And then when you give it a gentle pull, you've made a knot. Alright? So you want to make sure... We're going to make sure that the, the ends are right, but you also want to make sure that your pieces are flat. You don't want them twisted. So do you see how how they're coming out next to each other, not like this? You want to make sure they come out like this. So this is what your knot is going to look like. See that? This is one side. And you always you want to make sure when they come out that they're coming out flat, just like that. So I'm going to bring it back over this way. So this is what it looks like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing from one end. So I feel at this point you can eyeball the that it's in the center. I mean, if you're a stickler for, you know, a bead here and there, you can always count your beads in. I'm not quite sure how you're going to do that so that it, um, you know, that it it's perfectly even. But I say you could eyeball it, and don't forget, make them flat. Mine kind of flipped over a little bit. See, so you just want to make sure everybody's flat. All right, so I'm eyeballing it just like that. And what you can do at this point is, is just, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to hold, you know, I'm going to just hold it by my, just kind of put my thumb over the knot, you know, or just on my hand like this. We're going to adjust the knot a bit. So if it moves a little bit, it's not a big deal. So I have my needle coming out of here, out of the end. So I'm going to try and pull in a teeny bit for this. So I'm just going to say, don't worry, but actually my knot, if your knot loosens up, it's not a big deal. You, the way you're going to keep it even is that you're starting at this end, you see. So coming out of here, I'm just going to work my way down these two beads right there. 
Then I'm going to come up the two on the other side, just like that. And then back down three on this side. One, two, three. And that's going to place my thread exactly where I want my first bicone to go. So I'm going to just move this out of the way a little bit. Here are my bicones. So I'm going to pick up one bicone, just like that. Hold this. Coming out of here, I'm going to come through the bicone directly across from the one I'm coming out of. Just like that. Pull. And then I'm going to come directly across and go down three. So directly across the one I'm coming out of and down two more. That makes three. Now, just to backtrack for a second, um, like I said, don't worry if this becomes loose. You're going to play with it and just make sure what you can do at this point. I mean, I suppose you could, you know, sort of put something around this to hold it in place. I just play with it and I look at it periodically. You know, you can take your tape measure and you could measure, okay, I've got two inches either side of that. So just make sure you're staying sort of at two inches. And then like, as I said, as we put our bicones on, we're going to just look at it and make sure that it's staying, you know, that, that it's in the center. So you'll be putting on about minimum probably 15 bicones on this side, or 12, let's say 12 to 15. So we have a few to go before we have to worry about the knot. So pick up another one. You're coming out of here, just right there. Just come across the bead directly across from it. Just and go up that bead. Just like that. And you want to just pull it in this direction and come down three. Just like that. Do it one more time. Then you know you want to pull in the direction your thread is going. Pick up a bicone, coming out of here, come through the one directly across. It's fighting me a little, just like that. Give it a pull in this direction. Now you want to come back down the one directly across your, the one you're coming out of, and two more, so down three, just like that. All right, so here's my, this is what it looks like. And that's what I'm going to do all the way down. So do that, and like I said, I'm trying to think of what we can put around this. I don't know, maybe, maybe get a rubber band around it, or uh, a big, I don't know. You can like tie something around it if you want to keep your knot in place. I'm not too worried about it. Once I get the few bicones on, I can always adjust the knot. All right, so keep going until you're two or three bicones before the end, and we'll do the end together. All right, see in a few. Okay, we're back, and I am a couple of bicones before the end, so I'm just going to put those on with you. So I'm going to pick up, maybe pull my thread down a little bit. Pick up a bicone. So I'm coming out of here. I'll come up this one. Just like that. I'm gonna come across and down. Three. And I'm gonna pull in the direction of my thread up another one. Coming up this one. Coming back across and down three. Then I'm going to pull this direction. I'm going to take a look at it and see where I am. All right. So actually I think I'm like in the perfect spot. Um, I don't think I'm not going to put another bicone there, all right? So what I want you to do at this point is let's just connect, get that other bicone connected. So we're coming out of this bead right here. 
just come let me just hold it so I'm coming out of the right bead come up through the bicone directly across and say maybe another one I just want to connect that and then I'm going to come down let's see Actually, I'm going to come back one I'm just coming through the one directly across and then down let's go down two just like that and I just want to see the best way to sew to sew this in all right so come let's see I don't want to sew this down yet. I want to have I want to have this available for playing with a little bit. So I'm just going to take my needle and I'm just going to come right through to the other side. I just came through the see like that. I just came through there. All right, and then I'm just going to actually you could just leave it the way it is, or you can just sew down like that. So that way it just kind sort of gets it out of the way and I, you know, as I said, I just want to leave this open and available to play with if we need to play with the knot a little bit. So then just take off your, you have a thread on the other end or if you don't, then add one on and then do the same exact thing all the way up here and you're going to end, you know, sort of like with this one, I made a, I put one more bicone sort of in the center. So you can decide where you want to end it. You can end it so there's a lot of big hole with the knot, or you can have that little bicone in the center there. All right, so do that, and then um, get this side done, and then meet me back here, and we'll tack down the knot. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back, and I'm, I've finished both my sides. So let's sew in, let's sew the knot down a little bit. So here I'm, I've, I'm working on this side at the moment. So I'm coming out of say this seed bead right here. I'm just going to end off, you know, the piece by, you know, the the last bicone by coming through the seed bead next to it. Then I'm going to come back through, let's say two. Don't get caught. I just want to tighten that up a little bit. So then I'm going to, so I'm coming out of here, let's say, see this seed bead right here? I'm just going to come up through this one, the one right next to it. So I'm working to the outside edge of one of the sides here. And then I'm just going to turn the bracelet around to the back, just like that. So here I'm coming out of an outside edge. I'm just going to find the corresponding seed bead. So I would go like this. That's on the knot and come through that bead and the one next to it. See that? So that puts me on the back. So now I'm going to hold it this way again. All right, so I'm coming out of an end seed bead right here. I'm just going to go a seed bead on the bracelet just like that and then I'm going to go back up through another seed bead just like that so here I've connected the two seed beads there see right here and then I'm just going to go back through a couple of beads on the knot and I'm going to do the same thing over here I'm going to come down this seed bead on the bracelet, just like that. I'm going to come directly across to the seed bead, across from the one I'm coming out of, just like that. And then I'm going to just come back through, Let's say two beads on the knot. And then I'm just going to repeat. I'm going to come down this bead on the end. I'm going to come up through this one. Just like that. Then I'm going to come down through 
maybe these two, like that. Then I'm going to come around. That's going to lead me, you know, about there. Come through, bead like that. And then at this point, you can just maybe grab a thread from underneath, like that, and put a little half hitch knot in there, like that. And then I'm just going to putting my needle in. That's coming out through the beads underneath. You see that? It's just staying on this outside edge. Just like that. And then I'm just going to take that off. And then I'm just, then I'll clip this thread off. And I'll just use my scissor for that one. Okay, so now I have this part tacked down. So then take, so remember the other side has the thread coming out the back. So you're going to do exactly the same thing on this side. So here, I'll get you started on it, but then I'll let you finish it on your own. So I'm going to thread my needle with my tail. There we go. So I'm coming out of, let's see, I'm coming out of this seed bead, let's say right here. See that? So I'm just going to come up this one, the one right next to it. And I'm going to flip my piece around. So here I am again, see? So I'm, I'm coming out of the edge of edge C bead and I'm coming across to where the loop where the um, the knot is and then we're going to come down two and I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other side. So you're going to attach here, come up to, attach again. So just do the exact same thing on this side and then meet me back here and put the clasp on. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back. So here I am, all done. Let's get the clasp on. So you'll need some eightos, a couple of bicones, and I have this two-strand box clasp. And if you notice how the it's got some rings on it. So these are perfect for this ending. So if your clasp is like this, but it doesn't have these sort of dangling rings here, you can actually put a little jump ring on there. All right, so pick up an 8 come through the first dangling ring, like that. Pick up an 8 a bicone, and an 8 just like that. Come through the second ring, just like that. Pick up an 8 Come down through, say, the first three beads on the other side. That's going to put it on just like that. And come up the next three. You're working your way to the other side. Down three. Up three. Then come through all your beads again. So just come through the 8 -o. All the, the ring, the 8 -o, the bicone, the 8 -o, the ring, the 8 -o, and then down a couple of beads. And you could sew your, your ends in at that point. All right, and then just repeat the same thing for the other side. And then meet me back here and we'll look at our bracelets. All right, see you in a few. Okay, we're back, and here are our bracelets. So here's the the gold and or the bronze and the emerald. Here's of course the um, Siam satin, and here's our little um, demo bracelet, which actually didn't come out bad. <laughs> so kind of cute. There we go. All right, so there you go. Here are our bracelets. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a lot of fun making these bracelets. They're really fun and very cute. Um, all right, so take care then, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.